So I'm going to try to talk while you're working on the, our first exercise, which is a very simple warm-up exercise. We're going to be doing a spiral. So the only rules about doing this spiral is that you want to do as small as possible spiral as possible without overlapping your lines. So you're going to be starting in the middle and doing as tight now, this is about focus. So your eyes are going to have to stay on the page. And I'm sort of demoing it here on the screen or on this tablet. Um, we're going to try to fill that page with spiral. So I'm getting you to focus and continue to focus for at least a minute or even longer. So I can keep talking a bit about the process of drawing and um, why I think it's important. So um, this is a quote from, or it's not a quote, it's a, I guess a theory from Dr. Lawrence Musgrave um, from the States about learning language. So as we are young, we, we begin with primary language. We begin with movement of our bodies. We begin with um, pictures. And as we get older, more mature, we evolve into more mature forms of communication, language, math, writing. And at a certain stage, we have decided to let the primary um, question, I'll tell you three things at once here. Yeah. Are we truly listening to you? Yeah. <laughs> Listen and spiral. <laughs> Is that working? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but drawing, music, and dance tend to get regarded or disregarded as primary forms of communication. Um, but there is a theory that, um, you know, thinking takes place in in the head is quite um, mental process. Visual thinking, you're starting to think and see and connect what you see um, with your thoughts. But through drawing, now you're connecting your own body. So you're making a link between your eyes, your mind, and your body, which is going to be, um, well, I will just read the quote. I believe that we can help our students be more efficient learners. We can help them learn and practice this third language by integrating it into our schools via drawing across the curriculum. Um, so that's the first part. Now, yes, I see people doing the double spiral. That's great. Uh, the double spiral, which, you, which I sort of have on my slide here, is difficult. So it's easy to start in the middle and work your way out, but then to do the second one and start your way to go back in is a little bit of a is a little bit of a trace thing challenge. Okay, let's get rid of that. Through the spiral exercise, what I'm hoping to do is just connect you to the page, because this is where we're going to be focused on for the next 40 minutes. I think I'll be ending right at one -ish. Okay. Um, Sorry? Okay. Okay, so moving right along from the spiral. You've had a good moment to, um, to focus on that. Um, now I have to, okay, so how many people have art backgrounds, training in the studio or drawing? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I, this is where off, people often stop in their sense of can I use drawing or can I draw even? And um, so one of the things that I like to, I like to do, this is one of my scientific terms, is the term pareidolia. Anybody heard of the term pareidolia? No. So if I, for instance, now I am drawing something on the 
page here, but if you look around the room, you'll see electrical sockets around the room. So I don't know if you don't see any electrical sockets. The pareidolia is the idea that we are programmed to see patterns, and we're specifically programmed to see faces. And um, for me, eye socket is the perfect thing because I can't not look at the eye socket and not see two little faces staring out at me. If um, you're on Twitter, you can go to at faces in things, which is a series of pictures that people take of everyday objects, lamp posts, fire hydrants that visibly and powerfully show a human face. And so this is the main argument for why I think anybody can use drawing. So it's the idea that your audience meets you halfway. So if I go to draw even the most simple rendering, whether it's an arrow or a light bulb, um, my, my audience is already paying attention and going to be filling in the gap. So it's not important for me to be, um, you know, a talented artist, to be able to understand what a light bulb looks like or all these intricate parts, I'm going to be able to do that to make that accomplished um, in very few gestures. Which brings me to squiggle birds. So squiggle birds is our second warm up. Um, we're going to be sort of going on a um, building on the, the spiral idea, but in this case, we're going to be doing some squiggles. So I'd like you to take your dark darker color, and um, good to fill the page right now. So you can sort of see my example, so I'm sort of giving it away by showing you the slide. Um, but try to fill your page with as many squiggles as you can fit in there. The, oh, sure. There we go. Live, live cam. <laughs> So squiggles take no specific talent. You're not really trying to draw anything. Um, you're just trying to put a squiggle on the page. So once you have a couple of those, take your brighter color or your secondary color and add some triangles. Let's start with one triangle first. Um, anywhere coming out of the squiggle, pointy triangle coming out. It can be at any part. You don't even have to think about what's coming next, even though you can all see what's coming next. And then on the opposite side of that squiggle, we're going to do a different triangle. So that one was pointing out. This next triangle is going to point in. It's going to point in. look kind of the same, but you'll see one has the, the wide end on the squiggle and one has the pointy end on the squiggle. Now where the, um, where the wide end is coming out, the triangle, you can add two dots <coughs> and add them to each squiggle. Get those down. And then the last two objects that you're going to, or the last two marks that you're going to make are forks. So start with a couple of sticks and then add more sticks. And again, there's no up and down. There's no, um, no right and wrong place to put them. You'll probably have a sense of wherever there's room is where you're going to stick them. my shoes before I walk around. That looks good. Make sure everybody's doing it right. Awesome squiggles. 
So look at all the character effects you've made. I mean, I probably if I had challenged you to draw some birds and color combination. I said, oh, we're going to draw sparrows and chickadees and stuff. We would have froze. Probably not. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, but more and more simply. <laughs> So, more importantly, you probably come up with some serendipitous characters, maybe a gesture, maybe it looks like that it's pecking or flying, something that you actually didn't expect. And um, that is pareidolia in full effect right there. Um, what if? Yeah, that works. I mean, the thing is that you can make squig you can make a squiggle into anything. Um, that if when we get into doing um, stick figures, when I have a longer session, we practice stick figures, and I'm sure everybody has the classic um, hangman hangman stick figure down. Let me get the live webcam going again. Yeah. So you know. Well, there are stick men. Um, that's the one that we that we learned. But actually, a squiggle person is kind of good as well. So, and in fact, you can get a bit a sense of torso. You can get a bit of sense of movement that you're never going to get with a hangman. I call this the hangman um, stick man. Um, but you can also use shapes. I'm sort of jumping. Now I'm off script, so that's <laughs> fine. Um, but any shape, you know, triangles work great for stick people. Um, rectangles work great. And you'll find even by making that one simple switch in how you draw a stick person by, by adopting a squiggle person, triangle person, um, First of all, you can be much more articulate with your stick people, which is hugely important. <laughs> okay. So to get into the business of using, you know, um, using visuals to draw out your research, I would say practice obviously is going to be there. <laughs> You don't need to go to art school, but you do need to kind of get a sense of your vocabulary of the ways that you're going to represent a different concept. And this is where um, visual thinking really, really comes into play. So I'm just going to let, so get some more paper space on the paper, because we are going to do a serious boot camp of visual vocabulary. These are all the tools that you need in your repertoire um, to do stuff. I personally recommend sketchbooks, of course, keeping a sketchbook for this type of work. Um, even so much, well, is it, I mean, everybody has their own um, preferred way to take notes. Um, but a practice that I have, I'm going to pass this around maybe. No, no, you can keep drawing. I'll show you this later. Um, I'll show this to the audience in the, on the webcast here. Um, so, so when I take notes for a lecture at a meeting, when I'm doing a consultation, I will take visual notes. So I am both um, drawing work, but I still need to use language. It's not replacing um, writing text. But I will use pictures as well. And um, oops, so the audience here. Um, so this practice is becoming kind of popular, especially at conferences. Um, it's called sketch noting. And you can take a picture, you can post it on Twitter. Everybody loves it, and they think you're great. Uh, <laughs> question. Yeah. You're making a poster large size, or um, I guess it's slightly, if you're doing large scale, um, you're usually in front of a group. So it's actually called graphic recording. Yeah. So you go from sketch noting, I, I, sort of my definition really, but sketch noting is a private practice that I do for myself. 
itself. Um, and I might share it on social media, but if I'm graphically recording a talk or a lecture, um, that would be on a larger scale, and I'd take a picture of that for sure as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm thinking of um, um, actually about before. Uh, we used to make a storyboard mm -hmm. about size, mm -hmm. and then if I wanted to sketch, but then how do I, because it's electronic, yes. you know, to get a printer, what it would be the product I'm doing that? Um, I don't know exactly. I understand fully the technology, but you, can you output to a file that from that okay. device? Okay. That's still this. Oh, yeah. This is still that. I mean, you can get into scanning. Um, if I'm doing that for a business, I will get it professionally photographed. Um, so it's in a studio and it's well lit. Um, but for 90% of the purposes, most smartphones handle that just fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. You're buying, uh, I guess, like the common way when people are presenting the, your canvas being kind of virtual. Is there a trick for the way you hold your pen, the positioning? <laughs> I totally stopped drawing against the wall. Yeah. The table is easy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what would you normally draw? What medium would you normally draw in? Whiteboard? Like whiteboard. Um, I don't know about holding. I mean, it's really. I'm not sure about holding per se. These I got fancy German art supplies, so it actually <laughs> it's got a place for my thumb and finger. It's guided, and it puts, you know, it puts it in the right angle. Um, one tip that I have, which doesn't really answer your question, but <laughs> is to keep your lids off. And if you're using multiple colors just so you can switch back and forth between colors. So that's sort of one pen holding trick that I have. Not really solving your problem, but. Um, okay, so visual vocabulary to icons. We're really gonna try to do this quick, but let's start drawing some lines because lines, we've done some squiggles, we've done a spiral, um, but you have a lot more variety with line work than um, you might first suspect. So, of course, you can do webcam. You can have straight lines. You can have curvy lines. You can have zigzag lines. Each one of these tells a different story, has a different feeling. Um, um, lines also have specific directions. Obviously, you can have vertical, horizontal. Um, but then you've got the quality of line as well. So, because I've got fancy German art supplies, I can do a nice thin line, and I can do thicker lines. Um, squiggles, of course, popular. Also dotted lines. Just a series of dots actually, even though it's broken, still technically is a line. If you're old enough to remember Family circus cartoons, those were really great way to depict movement, travel. Um, and then when you get into um, sketch noting or when you have other things, lines can become a little more, um, well, they can show energy. For instance, they can show speed. So if I've got a sphere, I can show some motion lines to show that that, that um, that ball was in motion. So I've got a, a happy face, which I challenge you all to throw one on there. You throw some lines, you've got surprise. And another challenge you want to draw would be, let's say a phone. And some more lines. And just even that distinction, I should have just drawn three lines, but on the happy face, you know, those three lines might be, might be seen as beaming. beaming. And on the cell phone, the lines might seem also beaming. <laughs> anyway, um, 
Okay. Six. When I do this in my in my workshops, we actually do them in a sketchbook, and every page is sort of um, sort of another another one. And this will all be for, we're all going to use all this stuff too, so you're going to need these as references for the final assignment that we're doing. Um, so shapes, obviously you've got some basic shapes. And as I mentioned, all of these can become people. And in fact, I may do that more often. I like the little people. Um, we get the complex shapes, stars. Um, you can make your shapes 3D. So if you have your square, a couple of, couple of orthographic projections. I took drafting, so that's easy for me. Um, kind of getting back to lines in a second, but I can take a circle. And with some with some lines, do some shading. So adding depth. Arrows. So arrows might be. Can I add arrows here? No. Um, but arrows might be one of the most um, arrows. I've got a great example on the web page about how arrows are um, kind of important. So. So arrows are just lines. We'll often use an arrow. This is a quick one on your PowerPoint presentation or on your whiteboard or your chalkboard. It's basically is just look at this. This is the thing. You're pointing. It's a very um, it's a very you have a very physical reaction to it. It's like it's kind of like pareidolia. You look at where the arrow is pointing. You almost can't help it. Um, but of course, arrows can be shapes as well. Um, arrows can have all the same qualities that lines have, curvy, and they can also convey meaning. So here's the first challenge question. Um, can anybody give me an example of arrows that convey a concept more than pointing? Like urgency? Up or down? Up or down, elevators. Good. Yes, that was the one I was looking for. Yeah. So it, this is a challenge. Everybody can try um, to draw three bold arrows in a circle. I'll just add some shadows to mine because I like to be fancy. So. Just using a couple of simple arrows, and I mean, this is on all our recycling boxes, it's on garbage cans, it is a universal meaning. It's an icon. And um, we are going to get into icons. I don't want to run out of paper too fast. Um, um, so, so while we're going, okay, so boxes, containers, the other part in your vocabulary are going to be, I'm going to call them boxes, but really it's anything except a box. It's a container that you're going to put something into. Um, so, you know, if you're using PowerPoint again, you've got your title. It may literally have a box around it, but it doesn't have to be so boring. Um, if you're doing, if you're doing um, sketch noting or scribing, it may be one of these. So here is something somebody said. Here's something somebody thought. Um, it's a container. Um, this is a good one for graphic recording. You often want to have a You often want to have a milestone. So in that case, I've used a flag container, so it's got some meaning. 
and then um, a really fancy. So we talk in, in art and design about making it pop, about making things come out. Um, it's one of the reasons I get you to use two colors. So you can always have an alternate color to highlight or to add some drama or shadow. Um, but then one of the, this is called the ribbon title. So with a curved, curved triangle or curved rectangle, we do a couple of these weird chevrons, they're called. If you can get that overlapping just so. Connect the dots like this. You've got something to, well, that's a tip. That's my first tip. Whenever you're do, anytime you're doing a container, um, draw the thing in it first. So if you're going to do a title here, milestone, I got lucky. Um, but the ribbon, I ran out of space because I, I drew the ribbon first. I drew the container first. Um, so flip that around. Okay, so um, so we talked about icons. Um, there's a great, so it's often, so the challenge when you're trying to draw a concept, um, some things are very easy to draw um, in terms of um, what's the visual that you're going to draw to represent this idea. So if I want to draw a visual representation of an idea, what's the, what am I going to draw? An idea. Yes. So you can all draw one. Get some lines on there for expression. Uh, icon is a great example, or a light bulb is a great example of an icon. It is somewhat universal. Um, now at SFU, we have our motto as the engaged university. So engagement is actually um, is is um, is our keyword. We're engaged researchers, engaged teachers. We can't stop being engaged. Um, <laughs> so when I go to come up with a concept, uh, like a video, I'll, I'll use Google. Like if I if, if I'm trying to draw represent an idea, I will go to Google Images and search and look through those items. Um, I have the link on the website to the Noun Project, which is actually a very good website for look, uh, browsing um, images, royalty-free, Creative Commons. You can use them, put them in your PowerPoint presentations. All those on the right are examples of icons from the Noun Project. But when I, when I um, go to search engagement or engage on the Noun Project, any guesses as to what is the predominant result? Yes. 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 Yes, that's exactly it. It's a wedding ring. <laughs> and that is, you know, just trying try to draw something sparkly. Um, so in this case, the now project fails in terms of being as a result. I can't use the wedding ring for an M. Fraser engaged university metaphor. So I need to come up with something else. Um, this is normally when we would do an icon jam, which I would be awesome to do in such a large group, but I'm going to have to skip ahead because I've got about 15 minutes left here. So, yes, what I wanted to get to was the four icon story. So this is going to be your first chance to tell to tell your research story. I've given you very rudimentary tools, lines, some shapes, some arrows. We've talked briefly about icons. Um, but the point that we're trying to get to is for you to use visuals in some way to communicate, um, presumably, your research. So, so, so four icon stories are a great exercise for practicing this. Um, in this example, this is from, um, again, the web link is on my site, but you can see examples of movies that are represented in four icons. Um, I would have asked you to guess what this was, but I've left the answer on the page. So, 
So the challenge, the, well, the challenge here, which I'm, I hope you're starting to think about right now. Now, so you may have something, you may have a burning presentation or a message on your mind right now that you want to try to um, try to illustrate in four icons. If you don't, I would suggest use a movie, use a book, use something that that you know well, a story, a song. Um, try to break it down into four concepts or at least four themes or four ideas and then come up with four visuals for those those things. Um, they do not need to be sequential per se. Um, I think with Romeo and Juliet it is pretty sequential. Like it tells a great story visually. I, I'm sure I wouldn't have needed the title there for a lot of people to get what that story was. Could show more examples, I think, on the website, but I I think maybe if we just have five minutes, um, I'm gonna let you work. And if people want to ask questions or anything at this point, I will walk around. For a patient, I don't have one, but that's a great example. So this is the, this is exactly the problem we get to in in teaching and learning. Because I work with faculty that are experts in this field. So an idea, like something like an idea, that's universal, but is it medicine? I'm not an expert in that. And so um, the icon jam. So we could start, we could follow up on that because it's a great um, brainstorming, visual brainstorming technique. But I would say gurney. That's what I would say. Yeah. We're in the little town. <laughs> 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 I can't draw. Can I Symbols are the kind of the ultimate icon. 
especially for the audience um, at home. I'm going to use your screen. So this is the bottom. And so it's four That's not part of that. Okay. So I'm just going to go around and show this one if you want to have a quick look. Um, this is four icons, four icon story. Faster is the better with this. If you have a uh, stream of consciousness, if you have this something that pops to mind. Anybody? Close. I'm going to show this to the audience here. Four icons. Okay, what's your story? That's pretty much my research project. I sit at the computer, I do my reading, I do my research, then I run a focus group, or a few focus groups, then I create a web survey, what? and I get my PhD. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Higher education, I'm drawing the propeller hat all the time. <laughs> and it usually means teacher. For me. Oh, well, yeah, that's out of the Hey, another one. Okay, very important in the province right now. Now, you notice they've added the step of the arrows. They've added arrows to their icons, which might be in. Necessarily. Jackie, you should get this. Oh, no. Very important to Providence and Vancouver Coastal Hills. Like the Is that it? That's right. Well, yeah, CSP is loud. It's not a 
So can you walk me through these um, icons while I've got it in front of the yeah, camera? We have a uh, nation on gurney. The gurney. Having an encounter with a physician who's taking notes on his clipboard. Physician, yes. And then from there, input it onto a computer. Yes. And to make a computer, and then it's outputted as uh, data. And then what? Only have four I'm only asking as a I'm only asking as a Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to take it as a patient. Yeah, yeah. Off the gurney. Off the gurney. Yeah. Going home. Does anybody have one more? Basically, we're near the end. I don't really have any concluding remarks. I've got a few. Oh, I wanted to show a couple things. Um, people are interested. Well, I'll pass this around. This is all my sketch notes. These are old ones. Um, but at the sketching and practice conference um, two years ago, so so we're trying. We're going to be doing it again in 2018. We're trying to gather, bring together visual practitioners from across disciplines. The teachers, the designers, um, artists, and um, in medicine, graphic medicine is a huge movement. And there was they had their conference in Seattle this year, right um, a week after ours. So that was really great to see um, uh, medical practitioners really diving into this stuff. So this is I've got a long list of references for you on that post, but this one I just always have to plug. Um, it's unflattening. And this was uh, Dr. Nick Susanis. So this is his PhD dissertation, which was accepted for his grad, his graduate his thesis work. And so he, he's done it as a um, graphic novel. It's amazingly deep and rich. It is both written and drawn. So again, it's not about having images take over. Um, comic book artists are masters at using image and text together. And I think you'd find it quite academic and quite um, engaging, and I kind of like to show that. And to the audience, I have <laughs> unflattening. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy this. I believe it's for sale on his website. Um, yeah, yeah. Our, you, it's Toronto Press, Toronto University Press, maybe. So that is basically the time that we have.